Welcome back to the North American LCS. I am Riving Tabizan the third, and pirating the caster desk with me is Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler. Let's keep the games rolling with our next bout. It's LMQ versus Team Solo Mid. This is an important match for TSM, and they can pull themselves into a tie for first with a win here. Yeah, TSM looked much better in their two victories last week. Their communication seemed to lie cleaner, and it really did show in their play. Lustboy also seems to be a positive addition to the team. He plays with a lot of confidence in that bottom lane. And he's working well with Wild Turtle, who got a 16 KDA for Week 10, only dying one time. <laughs> They've even come up with a nickname for themselves to rival CLG's Rush Hour. So expect more good things from the Wild Boys of TSM. That's a good one. So trademark pending. Today will be another big test for TSM's new lineup because LMQ have owned the head-to-head -head they have going 3-0 and zero in their previous matches. Yeah, LMQ are coming off one of their biggest losses of the year, though, to Cloud9, in which they weren't able to score a single kill in 33 minutes. After the game, however, I saw the team, and they were still smiling, and they were still able to joke about it. <laughs> Xiao Wei Xiao even had some fun on Twitter with their loss. You know, how to play this game. I'm so suck. Uh, <laughs> the team, though, has been dealing with some of these distractions off the rift as well. Uh, but the players, they're a very tight-knit group, and hopefully they will be able to keep their focus and get the job done today. That's right. If we look back to the start of the split, a lot of people were predicting that LMQ would be a middle-of-the-pack competitor. So their success has taken a lot of teams by surprise, not least of which is LMQ. When LMQ first came onto the scene, we scrimmed them a good amount of times, and I figured they'd be like top three, top four of the MLSS. We thought it was they were a decent team. We didn't think they were amazing. I did not have the greatest impression of them. I actually thought they were like, you know, in the middle and quite weak. As soon as they came into the LCS, they just buckled up and they just started looking really, really strong. LMQ will go 4-0 on Super Week. A perfect 4-0 start for their NALCS career. My respect for LMQ has risen over the course of the split because they were just dominating the challenger scene, so people are like, probably saying, ah, it's just challenger teams, right? It really seemed like not that many people believed in them to be the best team, and they've been kind of proving that they're first place right now, so I think that speaks for itself. They really proved that they're not just a one-dimensional team. There is a lot more to them than just playing aggressive, and if that doesn't work, they lose. They are not afraid to take an advantage that they have and just press it in lane or press it immediately. Usually they have at least two players performing like way above what they need to. They each have games where they just shine. Like sometimes you'll just see Akerman going ballistic on Gragas. Xiaowei Zhao will have a fantastic game too, like No Name More, Vasily just goes ham. I think they kind of take turns like going for the spotlight, and I think that's pretty awesome. Is this Guess what? It just keeps coming. Oh my god, the home guard Ackerman comes in and he wants to share a cup with Double Lift. Well,我们现在还是要保持好自己的状态的。之后赛才是现在目前最关键的，因为我觉得之后才是职业影响力还是四的那个名额。虽然说我们现在失望很大，但是我觉得我们还是需要保持自己的状态去，不不能让任何机
Well, being very modest has definitely helped keep LMQ on the top of the list there. Just pretty much, yeah, we're winning, we're doing very well, and we're exceeding our expectations. I mean, that's you can't just not keep on winning with that. You're not kind of putting yourself in a hole. Yeah, and with Cloud9 losing to EG, it's both TSM and LMQ just got a little bit easier to get those top two spots. That's right. Well, let's get this into the match right away. Here's your roster rundown. On the blue side, it's going to be LMQ. Ackerman, the top lane, no name in the jungle. Xiao Wei Xiao in that mid lane with Silly at AD carry, and as always, more his support. And on the red side, it's Team Solo Mid. Up top is Dyrus with a stylish backwards cap today. Yeah. In the jungle, amazing. Mid Bjergsen, AD carry, Wild Turtle, and support, Lust Boy. And that takes us into today's featured matchup. That's going to be Xiao Wei Zhao versus Bjergsen. Two men were, will enter the mid lane. And even more will join. <laughs> yeah, these are arguably the two best mid laners in North America. Xiaowei Xiao has gotten the better of Bjergsen in their first three games. I mean, this has been his best matchup, averaging 19.5 for a KDA. Yeah. And he's given Bjergsen his worst average KDA with a 2.1. But Bjergsen reminded everybody just how dangerous he can be last week when he carried his team to that victory against their rivals, CLG. And this is going to be a very telling showdown between last split's MVP and the guy who is making a very strong case for this split's MVP. That's right. And the big news we can't overlook is Dyrus's new haircut. <laughs> Keeps trying to keep it under wraps with that hat, but check this out. We've got a replay. Here you go. Yeah! So I was talking, oh, to, him. I was talking <laughs> to him before... Uh, they went up on stage, and this is a self-done haircut. That was a do-it-yourself by Dyrus. So 100% At least he didn't burn down the house. He got uh, that one for progress. himself. Make it progress. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. There could be a complete mind over matter thing, or maybe matter over mind at this point. I don't know. Maybe he's got the hair in his pocket in a pouch or something. I don't it, know. Maybe it it's has good luck. been pretty hot uh, in Santa Monica. Maybe their air conditioning ran out. He's, some, he's making some Chinese a new, players did that. He's making a new pillow. <laughs> Or just case he's going to stuff it with his own there hair. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds creepy. It is very creepy. Coming into this game, however, we're going to see a lot of action. TSM versus LMQ. The last time these teams will meet, LMQ being on the blue side here. So we'll see if they try and get anything crazy due to that fact. Yeah, the thing is, right now, I mean, LMQ hold the advantage because they're 3-0 and zero against TSM. Yep. And we've already seen two big upsets today. So I guess... If there was another upset this game, it would be TSM taking down LMQ. Syndra and Elise immediately going out. Bjergsen, he was able to shut down double lift on Tristana. Even he wasn't safe enough from rocket jumping away from Bjergsen's scatter. Yeah. He was just so on point with that skill shot. So uh, yeah, that kind of brings up a good question because a lot of teams have been banning Tristana against Vasily. Right. Uh, that was sort of his old main when he was playing back in China, but uh, as we've seen, they were able to handle double lift on that champion very easily. Last man coming in would still be, you know, Lee Sin still up, Gragas is still up, which is always huge. Probably either Gragas or uh, Tristana bans for Team Solo Mid. There's the Lee Sin, so that one's already gone. The other thing is, they could just leave both of those up and go for a jungle focus and take out the Nunu, which No Name has gone right back to after these top tier ones are gone. Yep. LMQ have found a lot of success with that champion. See if that fits with whatever they do. So the Nunu could still go in. That leaves the composition open for everything as Ackerman takes Lulu. Rengar being hovered over. Yeah, and very a roller coaster ride of Rengars we've had in North exactly. America. You can you can kind of tell like the crowd's a little bit uneasy about whenever they see a Rengar pick because a lot of the Western teams just have not been able to utilize him. Uh, to his maximum potential. I mean, he's, he's all about getting to that six very quickly and then having very strong ganks. So we'll have to see if TSM pick laners that can set up his ganks well. If you set up a mid laner who's got a targeted CC, yep. like a Rise, then it would be very, very easy to get a kill with that first level six Rengar gank. The other thing that's really important is the support pick here. There are so many supports uh, that can really aid a Rengar gank. Yep. I mean, Braum is banned out, but there's still plenty of options with hard CC. Morgana's really chancy, but Leona's always there still. You still have Oriana for safety in that. Yasuo finding himself within this matchup again. Three out of the four times these teams have faced off, there has been a Yasuo, and it's been on both sides. And Yasuo, uh, 
under the, under the command of Xiaoyi Xiao has been very, very scary. Plus, yeah, they already absolutely. locked in multiple ways of triggering his ultimate for that late game knockup. Yeah. I mean, Lulu and Nami, they pretty much have all of the triggers that they need. Talk about it a little bit, Kobe. We got the Aurelia, but we also have the cow, Alistar, so, in the game again. Yeah, we got to talk about Alistar because he got some, yeah. he got some much needed love. Uh, buffing up his ultimate and his mana cost. Yep. He's often been used as a counter to other melee supports, but they just pick him right into now. Oh, wow. Very interesting. And there's the super popular flavor of the month, Zillion, and he's going to be played mid. I like Let's See it. if uh, Bjergsen can fill in Faker's footsteps and actually go with uh, Medjai's, <laughs> or if he just goes with the uh, standard tier and chalice. Skipping the Medjai's. Well, Bjergsen likes to play aggressive and he's usually going to be shutting down Xiao Wei Xiao with this one. So it'll be an interesting way we get initiations now out of Team Solo mid. If they don't take a hold a hold of the game early, they're going to be walking up the turrets, really trying to aggress underneath it. It's going to be a tough game. Remember, our featured matchup is that Xiao Wei Xiao versus Bjergsen mid. So we get to see the Yasuo versus Zillion matchup in that respect. Let's pull up the votings from lolesports.com, where 69% of you think the TSM is going to wonder this one. And remember, you can always update your tweet by voting at LOL Esports and use the hashtag either LMQWIN or TSMWIN. Man, this, this matchup is going to be really, really interesting because their LMQ got so many picks that they have already been successful with. Yeah. Whereas TSM are bringing in a lot of new things here. Zillion, speed up that Rangar gank so he can get there in there even quicker and he'll arrive with a bomb on his head. And you double up with the selection on a new support. So new player for that support or new champion in the LCS for that support, new support. Yeah, Les Boy coming in very quickly. Before the arrival of Les Boy, we pretty much only had um, Aframu who would yep. play the cow. That's true. In very, in very specific situations, usually with Orianna yeah. or as a counter to something like Leona. Uh, but this time around, he's going to be the main frontline tank because Dyrus playing Aurelia focuses much more on damage from the top lane. So TSM actually are going to bring their tank from the support role, uh, freeing up their top and their jungle to bring damage. Dyrus on Aurelia has been quite a menace himself. We'll see how he does versus Lulu's Ackerman. Both of these top laners show a heck of a lot of consistency in their play from week to week. But who can make the plays here? Super weak is where you have to bring out that, that next level. Bring it to 11. Now, I really want to concentrate on this TSM composition because it's so interesting. There's so many different uh, little moves that they can pull off. I really hope that Amazing builds damage cooldown reduction Rangar instead of the tank cooldown reduction Rangar that we've seen because he has a zillion backing him. So he can have the confidence to build that early brutalizer along with his uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard and go for that early damage so his ganks, uh, early ganks are more impactful, but he won't have to worry about dying because he's got the zillion to back him up with the ultimate. He can just dive right in and play extremely aggressively. He can go very hard in these fights. It's also going to be hard for LMQ. they got to figure out how to coordinate in their fights. They have a lot of AoE, but if they go after Lost Boy a little too much, you still have the Zillion time of his ultimate to get somebody back. So there's a lot of mitigation TSM's working within those fights too. Yeah, looking on um, LMQ's side, Nunu is a very strong jungler to go against Rengar because one of the strongest things you can do against that Rengar is take away the big... Champ, uh, the big monsters in the jungle from him. Mm. Nunu's great at counter jungling and tanking those away because you can take away his stacks, uh, delay his stacking up of his wriggles into a feral flare, as well as delay the experience that he's getting to get to that level six. So you can also ward really deeply as Nunu because he can rush a sight zone. He doesn't have to complete his jungle item. Yeah. There are just so many things that No Name can do this game to try and punish Amazing. And should do. Yeah, we'll see if he's actually <laughs> able to pull it off, though, uh, because it does require support from the, uh, from the laners. Just, uh -oh. <laughs> just to make sure there's no tricky bigness coming in with a late invade, I guess he could delay a late invade by a few seconds. Because he can. Or he's just getting his rage out practicing. Hey, man, people say unless boy doesn't make plays, so got to start making plays. Let's see. The junglers are going to be following each other here Ooh, on the actually, same side. It, it kind of triggers uh, LMQ. They may what be thinking got? that was a false leash just because oh. Let's Boy stayed over there. And Let's then he Boy, came away with mana. He used mana well. and he took damage right. there. So 
it's a small trick that can help the jungler. As I said, there are so many things that No Name mm. can do. Uh, having the wrong intel of where Amazing started might be a small help to Amazing in this. Yeah. Uh, because it could trigger No Name to start his early invade and battle plan completely off of a blue starting Rengar. Uh, because they did have the late arrival of Alistar having used mana and having used health. Um, but Very really, it hasn't affected the game too much so far because No Nimbus no. did a regular path. We'll no see, though. It could tip him. off. Oh, the other thing it could do is, uh, you know, no wards have been placed bottom there by Vasily. So little does Amazing know it would have been a staff. very, very good time to gank bottom. He actually wards first and That's then a great place. to circle around back for it. Here comes No Name. There's the ping. They do get vision on him. They see him a little bit. And they now know that he has taken the same path with both buffs being worn. But now this is where No Name, he has found Amazing. And now he wants to put that pressure on. This is going to hurt. He that, that easily it do it. Great job. I don't know why uh, Amazing would go try and jungle immediately after seeing No Name. Yeah. Uh, easy follow there for No Name. It actually delays that Rengar quite a lot. Not only did he get the money and experience off the white, but Amazing was cornered in his own jungle. You can see the the territory that No Name was controlling there. Yeah. He cut Amazing off from doing anything. His only options were to either recall there or go for a lane gank bottom, which is already pushing back away from them. So the early move by No Name already paying off. And even though there was that fake leash. Aggression for CS here in the top lane and trying to keep within that. He's up 23 to 20, but he took a quite a bit of damage and he was just about to back. But now with Amazing coming just on his heels, looks like they may try to get a kill out of this. All right, Amazing really does need to have a successful gank yeah. too to get back in this. Looks like he will get... Oh, he missed! Oh, wait a minute. Is Dyer There's going to be a slow. He got one more second of Whimsy. That's going to be the lockdown. There's just a... Oh, he gets a beautiful... Amazing literally, it's on both bush. of them. Oh. He just got away from the farthest portion of the lane. Now to the bottom. The action doesn't stop. First blood coming in. A few more hits. Oh, it goes the long haul. What a snowball chuck coming in from No Name. Great gank here. I mean, amazing. He focused up top, and all, you know, on all fairness, that should have been a kill, and it should have been the first blood oh, yeah. for TSM. But he didn't hold on to the Bola, missed the first one, and then got the second one flashed. So all credit to Ackerman for a great escape, and then no name for an answer gank down yeah. bottom to get this Tristana, Vasily, as we talked about, going very, very, very early here. <laughs> Let's Boy's trying to hold the CS4 total to get back, but it's getting dangerous. I'm accusing uh, uh, Vasily specifically is making him pay for it. So this is Ackerman having teleported back to lane. We'll see what happened to that bottom. Wow! He was close <laughs> up. Turtle there in the front. Look at this. No name's like, Hoo! gotcha. And the big part there was the blood boil that he was able to put on Vasily. Yeah. And then even though No Name had to walk through the entire <laughs> goop and the flash slip in. and slide from Wild Turtle, he gets all the way there in time for the flash snowball. We'll see though, because they really would have rather had that first blood money go on to Wild Tur or uh, onto Vasily. Right. Uh, but No Name will definitely take it, and it will help him control this early jungle. Yeah, he's if, if he does get that, he's doing exactly what he should. He's ahead. He's being a menace even more, trying to cause problems. And Amazing has to back here, looking for his own jungle, which he's it not going to get. It is going to be such a late level six Rangar. Yeah. LMQ have done exactly what they needed to do for the early game here. They've already stunted Amazing's growth. Whoa, and Vasily once again. Oh my Here gosh. comes No Name. Lost Boy trying to be a mad cow. Beautifully played on his crowd control. One headbutt, one pulverize, and Wild Turtle's able to waddle out of that one alive. They are summoners down from that last engage, so they got to be careful. So I would always watch uh, the Vasily bans. Most people banning that Tristan against him. He loves playing aggressively. And Trist is great in lane, even in the early phases. This is still, by the way, the old explosive shot active that does 110 base. Ackerman baiting this one out. He has his ultimate. Dyrus just used his. We'll but it means back. And what that, that means is more wasted time for Amazing. Right. He went up top, delaying the level 6 even further. We'll see where he does finally go with that first game. Hmm. See what his best options are. Bjergsen returning to lane. Summoners still there for him, but we actually haven't seen too much damage between our featured matchup just yet. Shao Wei Shao and Bjergsen still handling each other quite well in that mid lane. One minute, or rather one kill in at seven and a half, and it's a thousand gold lead for LMQ as they work the late game Tristana. 
Well, uh, even early game, this is still pre nerf so Trista has a very strong lane phase here, and we've seen oh, yeah. it already. Yeah. It's usually dangerous for him to jump in because there's an <laughs> Alistar here. But it's Vasily. To protect. However, Vasily's only done it when he had no name at his back. So he knew he had support each time going in. And it's off to a great start for him. Look at that CS discrepancy. He is absolutely destroying the bottom lane. TSM have to have a very good Rengar gank uh, to get back in this game because time is running out for them. This is where Ackerman decides to keep Dyrus. They're both quite a ways away on this teleport, so it's probably going to stick to the top lane. The Dragon is getting a good amount of pink wards coming in from the side of LMQ, so we may see that coming up, especially with the blue buffs just being taken. With the red buff going over now to Xiao Wei Zhao. Maybe. No, it's not going to. Why not? Still got ganks coming out of no name. Gotta get back to the lane in time for minions. Mm -hmm. Now, this di CS's difference in mid lane also is pretty much just as big. Xiao is Xiao is doing a tremendous job farming those uh, jungle camps as well as controlling mid against Bjergsen. He has not been worried about this Rengar gank so far, but here comes Rengar down the mid. At the same time, though, LMQ starting off the, uh, the dragon, and they do have vision control. Yeah. Well, well spent money on those pink wards. This is going to be quite easy for them. Lost Boy would be crazy to be heading into this one. He's not even level 6 yet. And the team actually tries to make a bit of a move to see if they can get a catch. But levels down. Dragon goes to LMQ. So, if, yeah, if things are just remain as they are, you know, Nunu has a huge advantage as far as objective control. The Rengar has to make the move to get a pick first. Yeah. That's where all of his objective control from. It comes from getting a, a gank, a successful gank to get a kill before they can pick up an objective. Uh, but no name, all he has to do is keep up the vision control and an easy dragon for them. Wow, going for a... Oh! Or there instead, they get fast the flat. fingers. That's it. Unfortunate, that's another one, Kobe. Amazing, just falling farther and farther behind, not getting what he wants. He can go back into the jungle, but it's gonna be rough. And look at this, Ackerman, or uh, Xiao Wei Xiao in the mid lane. He's doing all this, this huge CS lead with an Avarice Blade. That is the greediest build that you can have. Just boots, one Doran's Blade, an Avarice Blade, and it is paying off for him. He's still crushing in CS. He is definitely going to be a problem for TSM towards the mid game here. Static Shiv already completed for Xiao Wei Xiao. He just got a huge boost in power. Let's see how they decide to use it. Always very interesting to see where LMQ decides to start to spread that power. They don't just leave it in one spot and say, we're doing all right. Yeah, well, he's also picked up Vision too, so he mm. knows that now, since he's got his um, Static Shiv, he has the ability to defend a Pink Ward, so he's picked up a Pink Ward of his own, and he can easily replace these, these yeah. two that TSM have just come through and cleared out. Thing is, they don't have to rush it because they already took the Dragon. They have the exact Dragon timer. He can hold on. To it until they actually need to establish uh, the vision lead down there once again before the next spawn of dragon. No name comes in to supplement everything that was just taken out. Let's see where they decide to go with this. Back to the bottom lane a little bit more. Looks like we're going to Infinity Edge from Vasily first. It almost works out in the way the lane's not pushing. He's rocket jumped forward numerous times with no name on the gank. So they're kind of playing that lane. Only one into ex explosive shot. So he's harassing off the auto attacks Whoa. here. It may be a little too late for that, though. Very close. He'll burn down, but he will be safe. Got to respect that all-star combo. Nearly taking his life. There's sustain on both sides. It's not usually what AD carries are seeing. You either have Nami or you don't. But now with Alistar back in the game, you got to consider that health coming back in against your opponent. Slowly pressuring this one. It's going to be no name. He will just show himself a little bit of muscle flex here and keep him off the turret. Yeah, and that extra speed he gives Vasily with Blood Boy helps a lot as mm -hmm. well. Dodging the Kogma ultimates, which are very, very problematic at this phase of the game. Amazing just showing up in lane to help shove it all the way in, though. Really trying to go for a gank here. Still have teleport. No, teleport's down, actually, for Ackerman. Dyrus has it, but with Ackerman so close to him, it's probably 
non-existent for that teleport to happen right now. So they, they safely push him off the bottom. Amazing, kind of soaking up CS there, but he's not getting what he wants. He's still going for that cooldown build, however. No name. Pretty far ahead of him with a sight stone and that cool coat building. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a really big uh, deal for Nunu to be able to, to get that uh, Spirit of the Ancient Golem pretty early too, because he does already have bonus health in his kit when he consumes a jungle golem. I was doing a pretty good job trading back there, by the way. <laughs> Great shot. Um, that Nunu will become a very early tank for this game. Yeah. Uh, because he's stacking so much health. Well, probably in for a pretty good game here. Never had an inhibitor taken down before 30 minutes between these two teams and their three matchups. We've always gone past at least 35 minutes. Well, that's a lie. One game was 33, but we're close. So probably going to get at least a 40-minute matchup here. So they are going to be testing each other towards that late game. And that's where that Kog'Maw and that Vasily are going to come into big play, well, especially with the alts of our mid lane it's, matchup. It's a really big thing that uh, TSM have sort of missed out on this uh, early game lead that uh, um, Zillion will give your team. 8% experience across the board that's right. for your team is something that uh, you really want to try and take advantage of in this small patch of time where TSM are already behind. The First Blood and the Dragon. Oh, no name here with the Bush Gank. All that crowd control was pretty much used instantly, allowing Dyrus to just flash away. Blows causing them to flash. I don't know if they'll have enough. They have to use it all. They do get Dyrus, but what can they get out of this? Dragon's in a minute, so that, that was pretty good timing, actually. It's going to give them a lot of pressure on that top side. I don't know. Can they take the turret? Blood Boiled Lulu can actually take it down pretty quick, and he's been shoving yeah. the turret in already. Yeah, they can finish this one off. A top turret right before Dragon. Right. This is a huge buff for LMQ. They can shove this one in and time their wave up top with setting up for Dragon. This gives LMQ plenty of time to get the vision around Dragon. All they have to do now, bring down the Lulu, get those pink wards in place yeah. and establish their vision around Dragon for the continued control. TSM trying to take an answer here, but the wave's already been cleared out. Yeah, TSM was like, we need something now. Unfortunately, Xiao Wei Xiao's wall stops all of that. Best of a bad situation, Dyrus doesn't have to use teleport to get back to that wave that's now at their second tier, so he can be available for Dragon. The other thing that's big about Zillion is the first team fight that you have is usually pretty big for that team because at that stage in the game, the Zillion ultimate yeah. has a really, really big impact. This is where the teams are closest in the earliest part of the game. And the first team fight where the teams are really, really close in power, reviving wow. someone is a huge, huge difference. LMQ just put their foot down. It's up to TSM to try and delay down bottom by Dragon. It looks like they're just going to give up the yeah. Dragon and trade that top. They don't want to risk going into that... Uh, fog of war and losing someone. So they do trade middle as well. A decent trade for TSM. Yeah, and absolutely. They, they, they actually top two. don't risk anybody going for that dragon. So slowly played back into control. Somewhat. Still 3,000 gold lead for LMQ here. And we'll see Lust Boy now completely trying to get himself in every lane to be omnipresent. And will help to start push these turrets up. Great for the disengage, so they make sure he's always there if they're in a sticky situation. TSM back up. They get a pretty good amount of gold there with 2-1 to one now in favor of turret vision for them. Mm. And it's going to be an answer for LMQ anyway. Yep. That so was they quick. even up the turrets. The thing here is it looks like Amazing will be going defense cooldown reduction build for Rengar. That makes me think TSM are going to lack a lot of damage towards the, the later stages of the game. Relying heavily on that Kogma is yeah. not going to work out. If they get really late here, Yasuo scales extremely well. Trist as well uh, is going to be buffed up by a Blood Boil from Nunu. So LMQ look yeah. to have the advantage as far as damage is concerned and the way that people are building right now. Definitely LMQ feeling like they're in a very good spot here. TSM kind of have to make something happen with the Rengar gank uh, and pick somebody off so that they can translate that pick into some extra global gold. They really need to catch up on objectives. Pretty much everybody on the team right now is lagging behind. Yeah. That's the thing, though. It's so hard for TSM to initiate a fight. They really have nothing. They're not pulling anybody in. They got to speed up and just crush face with Amazing if he can get in there and kill someone quick enough. 
Scary. Scary stuff. You're going to be jumping right into a possible tidal wave coming from more. So what they're trying to do right now is work off their double Trinity Forces. They have two mm. champions building Trinity Force, and whenever you get that item early, whatever champion it is, it's a pretty big uh, boost in power. That being said, they're already at such a disadvantage yep. that it, they still need the uh, aspect of surprise. Looks like TSM, amazing, looking for it. This is what they need. This is no the only thing they can get. No name is not the primary target, though. Shao Wei Shao gets hit up. He still has everything. Can initiate the fight as well. Uses that. Dyrus has to teleport, but... the rest of the team. It's going to be hard for them to uh, clear out these waves. Zillion Ooh. double bomb already used. See Team Solo Mid try to work around LMQ now. Usually we see TSM with the Elise, or at least the Thresh, trying to throw out all the picks and at least get somebody. This one, they got to be fed that. Almost getting a kill there out of No Name, stepping too close, but LMQ realizes they're getting too close to the fire and they start to back up and play their own game of defense. Let's see if TSM can take hold here. Ooh, a few good shots. Great double bombs too. Vasily's going to be really low for this defense. That's, TSM going to take wow. advantage of the huge chunk. Some damage under the turret. A few fast mistakes by LMQ there, but they quickly turn aggression from their mistakes. Yeah, TSM does a good job of backing up, though, as yeah. Xiaowei Xiao just rotated mid from bottom. He was holding bottom, so although TSM didn't get much damage on the mid turret, by chunking down Vasily, they drew Xiaowei Xiao away, uh -oh. and it enabled Dyrus to get something. Problem is, will he be able to escape? That's a blood boil, Yasuo. Dyrus is probably oh. going to go down. Ooh, the minion wave is in a perfect spot for TSM. They are very, very lucky of the timing because if the minion wave was a little bit further up, Xiao Xiao could easily chase it. <laughs> and that flash from Dyrus, 100% necessary. Very good choice yeah. by Dyrus and good escape by him. He's playing cherry picker right now, staying as much as he can in those side lanes to cause chaos and get a split going. So far, grabbed top and bottom by himself. Team was able to grab mid during a bit of the chaos at that dragon, which we will have in two minutes. Very even. Not really seeing who's going to instantly win a fight here. We haven't really seen LMQ get their prime initiation. And TSM haven't really found a fight from Amazing on the right person. Both teams very good at disengaging, and they have the comp for it, right? You have headbutts on one side and tidal waves on the other. It's going to be very, very difficult to get yeah, a fight. I think the, the first fight here, which could easily go either way still. Right even though there is that 3k gold difference, um, it's going to hinge a lot on how well the Zillion ult is used and okay. how good of initiate TSM can get with Amazing. Because they really do need um, one of those factors to come into play if they want to take the next team fight. Dragon in one minute, and they already have lost vision around the area. Yeah, TSM is very lax on wards coming into this. No, the sight a great stone. job. Two Sight Stones obviously help inside an LMQ. What do they got, Kobe? It's going to be a slow push down mid as TSM tries to dictate what's going on here. 45 seconds. If they can get good damage on the turret or at least some kits here, this dragon will be that much easier. The thing is, LMQ are choosing to use Xiaoi Xiao as their split push because Yasuo is so strong in the 1v1, but Yasuo does not have his teleport. So it's a teleport on Dyrus versus ya Yasuo who just has to walk over and they corner TSM. Lust Boy forced to use that ultimate right away, which means no damage is focused onto him. Whoa, hits him with the ulti on. Yeah, you can pen a lot, but that's huge damage reduction coming from Alistar. Might have been a mistake there. They are forced to back off now as TSM reassesses the fight. Yeah, not the cleanest of team fights here. Turtle does have red buff too. And with Bjergsen having his blue, they have a pretty strong siege here. Can LMQ even get through this small window? Bjergsen's zoning them, That's tough. zoning them out. Great wall, but they're gonna step right through it. That's what TSM needed. They really can't engage a fight themselves, but they can brute force very well. The thing is, they really need to regain vision control around this dragon. If they keep giving up dragons in one after another to LMQ, then it will be so hard for them to come back in the late game. And they almost kill off that pink ward. Man mode. Going in. Got to be the new haircut. Trying to stay safe. Don't bring that. Oh, you should have brought it all the it's other way. It's a friendly fire I know bomb. it's friendly, but you're <laughs> supposed to bring it the other way. Ah, oh, it's all right. Still a good ward. Well, the, ward thing is, clear. the thing is, as I said before, Dyrus is not the initiator for this team. It's all That's about true. the tank from uh, the support here, Lustboy. And Lustboy doesn't have his ulti. The ulti from Alistar being burned is a huge downside to TSM's comp here. What are they going to be able to do? 
Checking out Amazing. He's on the bottom side. He also has Bomb for a oh, bit of extra damage. Either. Not going to be a smite. It's going actually to Vasily on that. There's the initiation. Last breath goes in. Xiao Wei Xiao is forced to walk out of this. A great wall pretty much saves his life. Turtle, he's going to be Chrono Shifted back to life, and we're going to see if he'll be able to do enough damage now. There's the Void who goes out. Tries to hit it down to Kathy, and Surprise is going to be focused on to Vasily. He gets hit up, and he actually is put between both oh, of them. Vasily! While Turtle doesn't get damaged, Vasily says, King me, goes for another jump, Xiao Wei Xiao beats it in, Vasily gets the pentakill! That may be the earliest pentakill that we have seen. And once again, banning the Triss against Vasily here, LMQ come up huge. They get the dragon and they get the pentakill. Amazing play, definitely one we're gonna wanna see again. So no name, even though the dragon is about to die, no name flashes in to zone for the team. And TSM, even without this Nunu focusing on taking the dragon, LMQ get the dragon. And they put so much damage into the Nunu at the beginning of the fight that they're not able to clean that one up. Woo! Little old Vasily just hanging around the outside. Nobody pay attention to me. Yeah, I want to see it one more time, actually. <laughs> what a great play to come in on Super Week. Third game of the day. Pentakill coming in for Vasily on Tristana. We're going to see a 24 minute game quickly change pace here in TSM. Going for a little bit of an aggressive move, trying to pull LMQ into a false sense of security around this Baron. I don't know if he can ever feel secure here. They kind of have to fake like they are One more. doing the Baron right now and, and bring LMQ into a bad spot because from this point on, TSM's damage falls off pretty hard. They've got Zillion uh, and Aurelius transferring into a tank build now, so not much more damage coming from her either. This is the point where TSM's damage really falls off. They have to get some sort of pick. That's the speed up. No Name gets hit. That's the disengage. The tidal wave sets up everything. TSM now sitting in a choke point, trying to get this fight. Whoa! Oh, great, great headbutt pulverized from Lust Boy. Is it enough wall. to turn it? Dyrus is the only one that can get deep enough. Nobody else can gap close out of nowhere. It was a great wind wall, and it kind of zoned off the rest of TSM there. Nobody else wanted to go yeah. through it to Lust get to Boy the back down line. So if quick. you cut off the damage from Kog'Maw in the back line, there's not a lot that TSM are going to add. Well, turnaround there. It doesn't seem like the Pentakill did much for a grouped-up fight, if it were. Let's see if they can keep it going. Zhao Wei Zhao and their team able to hold off and stave a bit there. They lost more, but the best one to lose in a full team fight. They were able to take down Dyrus and Lost Boy. So LMQ still knowing they're ahead a bit. They're going to try to pressure a bit down this mid lane. See if they can get more wards out. There's been a lack of wards in this game just overall. A lot of everybody just being in the same spot, mid, dragon, or top. Yeah. They're mostly uh, LMQ wards Yeah, if, well. they, if they're out, they're LMQ wards for sure. LMQ, they do also a good job of timing uh, the wards that they need mm -hmm. to put up. Uh, as soon as Dragon is going to be you know, about a minute off, they decide to get their deep wards down in the blue side jungle, get their pink wards down, clear out TSM's vision, and it's paid off time and time again for right. them. Now, though, I'm just very, very worried. Once again, the tank Rengar builds cooldown reduction tank Rengar is not going to do a lot in this game because it's very hard for him to get to the back line through a Nunu. And once he does get there, he can't do much except take damage. Good pink wards giving LMQ coverage. This is LMQ forcing that advantage. They're all right with losing that second tier Baron turret. Has teleport, yep. but the Baron's almost dead already. It's too late. Chomped down once again. LMQ coming up with early Barons. It's kind of their forte. It's something they love to do. Dyrus trades back with a turret of what he can do. Looks like they're going to go ahead and try and get some more control over the base. Dyrus knows he's got a full team coming for him, so they're going to have to get themselves ready. Seraphs and Brace finished up on Bjergsen. Haven't seen too much coming out from him this game, but then again, we haven't seen really too many team fights that have allowed the Zillion all to be, to be used and then extended on with some defense. Looking yeah, for Wild I, Turtle to get a second item as well. I think you got to give a lot of credit to No Name for the, the early game control that he gave yeah. the team with this new new That pick. was huge. The first it, time he saw Amazing, it was almost over. Right. The difference in, in gank success as well. Ackerman living in the in the top gank there, the first gank from Amazing. Meanwhile, No Name uh, really comboing well with Vasily down there in the bottom for the first blood of LMQ this right. 
this is the team that took the head, the head of the game early. And there's no reason for them to ever, ever let up. Tristana already a massive, massive threat. Very different game being played here. Still focusing on the wards. I mean, because a lot of teams talk about wards, but TSM doesn't even have the room in their inventory for wards right now. They're actually full up, so they can't get the vision back that they do need. That's kind of imperative. They're working with the one sight stone to no names and mores. TSM still had the vote last time we checked it. The fans stand behind them, but it's going to get tougher as their vision just gets denied continuously. When Two Randuins to come out. On Dragon two, which it looks like it is going to be a pretty easy dragon for LMQ. Yep. TSM, once again, do not have any vision. Oh, and I like what LMQ are doing here, too. They're not just uh, waiting around in the river by dragon because uh, they're not quite sure if it's 100% dark for TSM. So they don't want to tip off TSM. And they're just waiting up on their own territory. Now that it spawns, they can go over and make sure that they have a strong perimeter of vision before they actually go to take it. They wait for Xiaoi Xiao yeah. to finish his recall, come back with the three item power spike that is scariest Yasuo we've seen yet. And that should be a very, very easy cleanup for them. LMQ becomes very definitive when they get a lead in the game and they will keep pressuring that lead. Even if they lose one of these fights, you'll see them teleporting out of the spawn just to home guard into a fight, as usual. Yeah, and this lull that we're seeing now, LMQ just kind of taking all of the global gold that's on the map, comes from them playing so well with this Tristana. They know it's Vasily's favorite champion. They all really play well around it. You can tell from the early aggression, trying to make use of the very strong explosive shot active where uh, Tristana has a pretty strong aggression early and the ability to rocket jump and create right. pressure in her own lane by herself. They play off that really, really strong early and then they kind of sit back towards the mid game and collect all the rewards from their early aggression. And then it comes out just in time for the late game where, once again, Triss goes through another spike, LMQ right. go through another bout of shoving down objectives. Turret after turret, taken for them. And it becomes that much easier, Kobe, when that Triss has already got a pentakill and you're almost escalating the amount or the period of time you can do things in. Right now they've taken top, they can now go around the horn and that second tier turret is gonna be the next thing they wanna take down in middle. Dyra still doing what he can, pushing minions. We can on the outside. 30 minutes on the clock. We're getting close to there when an LMQ took the earliest of inhibitors between these two teams, which was 31 minutes. It only took them two minutes after that to win the game. We'll see if they have the same result here. It looks grim on that, but the win still looks close. Yeah, this could very well be LMQ 4-0 against TSM. Yeah. This time around, they've done such a good job of just answering everything that TSM could have had going for them uh, with the new new pick, really stunting the growth of Rengar early. But man, I'm very curious to see. Uh, this is one of the things that you want to you know, start thinking about already. If LMQ do play high in the playoffs and they do earn one of the spots two worlds from North America, will they be able to do the same type of thing against the uh, Korean Rengars, the foreign Rengars, who have been a lot more threatening than the Western Rengars? You know, is would this same play actually work just as effectively? That's what we really want to see. The true test. Because uh, so far, in North America and pretty much Europe as well, we haven't seen a lot of success with that jungle pick. Right. But people really want to make it work. We'll have to see. They're, they play consistency, and it always seems to work. Uh, LMQ really only put themselves in a bad situation maybe two or three times, and once it was in Champion Select with the Pantheon pick. So they they can really steer themselves away from danger and understand when it's correct, but see if they can steer themselves out of this. Yeah, they did talk about, you know, oh, we get ourselves into trouble when we change everything up in Champion Select. Yeah. They didn't change anything up in this Champion Select. These are basically LMQ's favorite champion. Right. Almost across yeah. the board here. I mean, No Name might prefer Lee Sin over Nunu, but Nunu's a very close second for him. TSM does get another turret in this split push by Dyrus, but they can't afford to give up inhibitor turrets. Dyrus probably has to come back right now. LMQ is taking that vote now, 62 to 38. Dyrus is teleport back as they try to set up the turtle on this next wave in. One minute on to Baron. 
See if LMQ can get any more pressure out of the bottom lane here, or just to steal resources before they back. Our featured matchup in that mid lane. Bjergsen's been doing well outside the lane with 365 to 298. Some of that CS lead came definitely in the lane as Xiaowei Xiao does to his opponents. Somehow finding consistency against the Zillion. Yeah, and Bjergsen is doing everything he can to stay relevant later in the game. But Zillion, yeah. it's just the Zillion's just ratios aren't that great to scale late, uh, late into the game. We'll see if uh, the revive is going to be that big of a difference. Meanwhile, the full tank Rengar here. One DPS item Aurelia. We'll see if it's enough. TSM probably probably just have to get one of those picks and find LMQ playing a little bit lax. But right now, TSM have zero vision to work Ooh. with to get those picks. Absolutely nothing for them. So they rushed out mid instead. Just to teleport, Dyrus is flashed. He's pinched against the wall. Will they be able to focus him? Lost Boy trying to do what he can. Amazing goes right in onto Ackerman, but he gets wild growth into the air. LMQ now reassessing the fight, and it's Dyrus in the eyes of Xiao Wei Xiao and the rest of the team. They got to leave a man, man behind. TSM goes to set up the turtle in mid. Oh, he gets the speed up! Oh, the tie Caller's blessing, a good enough shot, and Vasily is able to oh, reel in another flash. one. Looking for the triple coming in. If he can get even more, but he cannot get another reset, cannot get another kill. They will, however, take down this inhibitor turret and drop the inhibitor. What a turn. Question is, with a 30 second death timer for Darius and Amazing, no, they how don't. much the LMQ <laughs> want to press? They don't have to press anything. They've got complete vision control of the entire map. They can go back and heal before this Baron. They don't need to though, they just want to rush it. This is TSM's chance. If TSM are going to make a, a comeback here, it'll be for some miraculous steal on this Baron. Only one ward on the map for Team Solo mid yeah, at this point. They have, there's no way. And that's not going to be one on Baron. I don't think No Name has gotten a Baron this game. I don't think a jungler, I should say, has gotten a Baron throughout today. It's always been somebody else with an auto attack. We'll see what happens. The rest of the game, another Baron to LMQ. Nine on Dragon, and that's going to be money for TSM. Definitely money that they need, but it's just getting stronger and stronger on the side of LMQ. It's only a matter of time before it's lights out. 35 minutes into the game, TSM's going to try and set up slowly. Here's the vision. Let's see if they can get yeah. it back in order. They're going for a little bit of a desperation play. They hope they can catch somebody from LMQ right. away from the pack. And that's honestly the best thing that they can do right now, is stack up in five where they know they have true sight and pick somebody off. Well, map is objective free. That means that Team Solo Mid can move Ooh. freely as well. They've w they've used all of their vision control though. They dropped pink wards and all of their sweepers around the dragon area, hoping that LMQ would come in one by one, yeah. looking for that, that free wave. dragon money. But all of that money they dumped into that true site uh, all goes to waste down on the bottom side of the map because LMQ just heads straight up to top. LMQ do not mess around, looking to end this early. If they can work with that push of the super minions up mid, uh, it's very easy for them to siege this turret. Vasily already scaling into that lake and with his uh, range. And LMQ just moving so quickly right now. It's like they have inverse vision on the bottom half of the map. Since nobody's sitting in their 40 wards on the top side, obviously TSM sitting in the dark on the bottom, so let's go top. They get here at about the same time as TSM is able to regroup quick enough. No name in the team is ready to give Vasily a meat shield here as he goes onto the turret. Short Good hop. little hop there. Gets himself out of danger. The bomb's still doing <laughs> decent damage to Vasily though. As you can see there, he's getting chunked down to half. Which Blood is boil. some good news for TSM. But TSM really got to make their move. Their turret's down. Amazing used his ult and he doesn't get off the initiation. Nope. What a disengage from LMQ there. Yes, I'm going to have an extremely difficult time now because not only did Amazing use his ult, he's out of ferocity. He won't do anything no. in this team fight. You can see him still trying to throw out bolas and get that charged up once again. Inhibitor's going down now in the top lane. LMQ is making quick work of Team Solo mid's base. Just four minutes ago went down the first inhibitor. So they're going to stay for some pink ward fun as well. All right, yes, I've got to do something here. Two inhibitors down. That's pretty know, much the Kobe. death sentence. 
Definitely looking grim at this point. LMQ knows they have control. And slowly walk this one to a possible 4-0 to zero against Team Solo Mid over the season. TSM Ooh. gritting their teeth here for what could be a final fight. This wave's quite far out, so they got some time to think about how they can make this happen. I mean, LMQ just have so much disengage. Yeah. TSM can't get in. Even with a Rengar Zillion combo, they can't get in to the Nami Nunu Lulu. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You, how do you engage on Nami Li Lulu and Nunu? Five times fast. Say it. <laughs> Not me, Lulu, Nunu. Less boy could try it, though. He's got flash uh, combo ready. I thought you meant say it five times fast. I was like, why Lust boy? <laughs> 38 minutes, they're entering the front door. Say, hey, you guys want to party? TSM. They answer with no. Wild Turtle just throwing loogies out from the backside. Oh, amazing. Tries to party, but he can't really decide if he wants to stay all night. It's going to be Dyrus getting hit up. He's thrown through the front door first. Wild Turtle's going to be the focus now. LMQ with perfect focus coming into this fight. And that's going to be a lockdown as well. Xiao Wei Xiao coming up with two on that one. They will finalize another one coming in for Vasily. And LMQ gets what they want. Now on the Nexus turrets here on Super Week. Pearsons, he's trying to go for Ackerman. The bomb. Oh, he saves himself. What a oh, shield. Oh, my one. word. He does get more, though. Sushi for TSM tonight. It's going to be Vasily on the last Nexus turret. He's staying focused. Everybody else is on the Nexus turret. Or on the uh, fountain, rather. And he's like, guys, let's win the game. 39 minutes in. Fist pump coming in from Vasily. LMQ takes down Team Solo mid for the fourth time. Man, that entire game was under their control, too. From the get-go, LMQ running with the early Nunu for jungle control, and they did just that. Ackerman as well, you gotta give a shout out for uh, Ackerman avoiding the first gank there, even though he was extended so far. Making sure that the Rengar didn't start to snowball and he didn't have a good early start. Yeah, the first time he saw, uh, saw Amazing, he's like, oh, I'm tailing you. We're going right to Wraiths or a right to White, let's go. He did not give up. And we said that was gonna happen, Amazing. They tried to play the mind game of Alistar bumping blue with a headbutt. I liked it, that was pretty cool. Alistar it, comes to lane low on mana, but it didn't phase no name at all. Yeah, uh, TSM knew that they had to do you know something because it was yeah they, had they were expecting a little something from, uh, no matter what. Nunu. But honestly, it was just a great. It was very well played by all of uh, all of LMQ there. They they really did deserve that win to go four and zero versus TSM. Yeah, I'd say a pentakill is well deserved. That was a very <laughs> a twenty two minute pentakill. That Usually was a when very we see chaotic pentakills. Fight. Usually when we see them, they're like 50 minutes in when it's a super fed I see this fly too, don't worry about and, uh, it. <laughs> and it's uh, Caitlyn firing from the back lines or something. But Vasily earned his, just jumping right into the team fights so, so early. Yeah, that was twice in the bottom lane. Before they saw six, they would just dive right into the AD carry. As well, you're diving into an Alistar, so you're instantly going to get either headbutted out or pulverized. But that crowd control doesn't kill you, and LMQ knew that. Their aggression prevailed once again, and they just stayed on the ball. Ackerman keeping Dyrus down in the top lane again. And I think... As we said, TSM didn't get those kind of pick comps that they can make plays with. They didn't have an Elise. They didn't have a Thresh. They didn't have something that can lock somebody up, and then TSM keeps going on. So LMQ, they're able to take the 4-0 against them. Let's send it over to the guys at the analyst desk for some more insight on LMQ's win. Thanks, Riv. Want to welcome back Joshua Jat Leesman to the analyst desk. And Jat, yes. at the beginning of the show, we talked about LMQ having some inner turmoil and the fact that this might affect their play. They might slip up a little bit. That didn't seem to happen. So is that all yeah. moot point now? Are they here to just snag that top spot and hold on to it? One thing we got to remember about LMQ is there's been a lot of questions about them this entire split. Whether it was them, are they going to be a tough a middle of the pack team? Okay, they started 4-0. Oh, but they started their release just because no one knew what they're going to do. Wait a minute, they're still first. Oh, they have management shakeups. No, they still know how to play League of Legends. Every time there's a question about LMQ, they seem to step up and answer. And I think the biggest thing about this is we're questioning how distracted they would be by the distractions or how insulated would they be from all the chaos. And it looks like they've been able to focus on their game. Yeah, they've just been focusing on their game completely. They came to North America to play some League of Legends, and they're doing exactly that. They just beat TSM with Lustboy, which was on an upswell going 2-0, and they looked really good. Yeah. And TSM actually looked pretty bad that game in terms of ward control and just all over the map. 
All right, so let's touch on that a little bit. TSM, conversely, did not look so good after no. having a 2-0 week last week. So with the addition of Lust Boy, where do we point our finger to find the problem there? Yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. So much went wrong for TSM this game. It's hard to point to pick and ban because we looked at the bans that they actually did do. It was what, Cassidy, Braum, and... Gragas. Gragas. Those are all bans you're like, all right, I guess those are foreseeable bans. But Kobe mentioned it during the game as well. LMQ got all of their favorite champions. And TSM was put in a situation with the Zillion and the Rengar that they had to win early. So LMQ just played the most casual, comfortable game possible. Yeah, and it wasn't really a multi-threat attack that they had, and their synergy it just seemed like they tried too much innovation at once. Mm -hmm. They brought the Alistar, they brought the Zillion mid, then Dyrus on Aurelia top isn't something we always see. He did have a really good Aurelia game previously, but that was off of the split push. And then you look at LMQ, it's back to the basics for them. They tried the poke comp last week, didn't work. They're like, right. Yasuo comp. We know how to do this. They know how to do this well. Mm -hmm. Handed a Nunu for objective control, and then Tristana on Vasily. You cannot give him that champion. Let's talk about the picks for another second, though, there. Sure. We saw the Rengar come out. Three wins, ten losses in the North American LCS this split. Now, we're seeing a ton of success with it over in Korea. They're, it's picked, banned every single game, usually first rotation, things like that, and then it's generally performing pretty well. So why are we struggling picking it up so much? I think the big thing there is vision. TSM lacked vision control, and people are favoring Sightstone junglers now that the rest of the team has to, when you pick up a Rengar, contribute early and then snowball the Rengar off of a lack of vision on the other team. Rengar's ultimate gives you vision. You go in and you capitalize on this and you bypass wards and then you build a little offensive at the start. Then you transition into tanky late game. You have to set yourself up for success and not let up the pressure because Rengar does fall off late game. Yeah, I do think it's a little bit to do with sample size as well, but... One thing we do have to keep in mind is how Rengar is not just a champion that you pick in the jungle, it's a strategy that you have to play the game with. He doesn't have much presence pre-6. When you compare him to the other junglers, which are all about the pre-6 presence in the game, it's a total change of mindset. Not to mention how important your ganks have to be, and also you, you're put on the clock. It falls off late game. You can't be 77 minutes into the game and still have a Rengar being super effective on your team. NA teams have been playing very long games this split, which is not a very healthy environment for an early game snowballing strategy. I think it's just a bunch of combinations as well as a small sample size, but it's still a strategy, not just a champion. All right, well, let's get into the game then. 23 minutes in, we'll look at a replay so we can kind of demonstrate mm -hmm. how difficult it was for TSM to engage in a team fight even that early into the game. So, Zyrene, if you could walk me through this dragon fight. Yeah, this is going to be the pentakill hill here from Vasily. It's 23 minutes in the game, one of the earliest ones we've ever seen. Xiao Xiao goes straight after the dragon. He'll win wall to just block off some damage from the side. And then No Name does zone control. We'll start rolling the clip right now. Watch where No Name goes. He completely disregards the dragon, flashes into the team, to zone them off, and everybody starts focusing him. He's so tanky that by the time that the dragon goes down, everybody's just focused on him. And they used all of their crowd control right there on the Nunu, which left the rest of LMQ free to just rain chaos on the rest of TSM. Yeah, and then Vasily just camps the body, comes up, and he's not the main target here. Everybody's focusing some other threat. They think it's a Yasuo comp. You zone the Yasuo off to the side. It's really a Vasily focus comp at the same time. It's multi threat, and that's just so cute right there. He goes, flashes over the wall, Rocket jumps back. Vasily's always going to go in if he has an option. Now, one of the my, one of my favorite parts of that clip is the fact that Vasi or, uh, Zhao Wei Zhao is in the dragon pit, just tanking the dragon that oh, yeah. whole time. Just like, nah, I got this, guys. Don't worry about me. Um, but in a more serious uh, aspect, we noticed that the Zillion, did, the Zillion ult never really was effective, right? They mm -hmm. used it multiple times in multiple fights. Freak kind of touched on it, like you have to use it in the earlier stages where the teams are more even, they're more equal. So what happens then when you've got this champion like Zillion and you're starting to fall behind? How do you come back there? Ooh, it's really rough because Zillion ulti, of course, is a utility-based spell. You have to have somebody who you set up for success, and they had the makings of that. If you get the Rengar to camp bottom and then you get that ahead, then you just keep using the Zillion ultimate on your AD carry, and then you're fine for the rest of the game, but they didn't do that. One thing that was really critical is that team fight we just saw with Vasily's Pentakill, that was where TSM needed to get back in the game, mm -hmm. right? It was a fight where they still managed to take down, what was it, four people on LMQ, because he did yeah. finish off Shaoi Shao with that last Zillion bomb. If they would have played that fight a little better, that's exactly what they had to do. They have to force, you pick Zillion, you're running against the clock, unfortunately, because you have to win early on in the game. It's not intentional. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, that's, that's really the way you put it in. That's why you actually see Soul Stealer as a legitimate item on Zillion sometimes, because he has to snowball the game in order to be effective. 
All right. Now, looking at kind of the more macro scale, LMQ is now two games up on the lead. Both Cloud9 and LMQ have mm. already lost their first game, and they were the two that were really looking at contending for that spot. So how do you guys view kind of that top four slots kind of uh, playing out? Right, because it's, it's, it's uh, just to clarify, LMQ, two-game lead on TSM and Cloud9. With three to go, it's seemingly like LMQ is completely out of the woods as far as danger was concerned. We had all those questions about whether or not they'd be effective in their gameplay, and at least for now, they are looking just as good as they've ever been. Like, nothing happened to them in that match. Yeah, it's really hard for people to catch them right now, especially since TSM and Cloud9 play each other. Mm -hmm. So one of those matches has to go the other direction. So LMQ, even if they lose the remainder of their games, they're still looking at a tiebreaker situation, possibly, but I think Cloud9 right. actually owns that over them. Yeah, but they would hold the tiebreaker over TSM because yes, exactly. they beat them all four times. There's only one can way that LMQ wouldn't make top yeah. two. That's if they lose all of their games and they end up being tied with Cloud9. Now they play EG, Curse, and Dig in their next three games. And surprisingly, we talk about them being out of the woods, but they have mm -hmm. losing records against Curse and Dig. So is there an opportunity for some upset there? And, and what do they need to do specifically against those teams to kind of make sure that they get out? I think they the continue spot. to do what they're doing. They can rely on their power picks for the most part. We saw, especially when LMQ is blue side right now, the bands that they drew just because they're so proficient at the main band champions, as well as having so many things that they just excel on, specifically like a new new jungle, blue side is just play comfortably comfortably for them. And other than that, just don't underestimate their opponents, which they've never done. Yeah, exactly. They come in with complete just respect for their opponents. And they're like, we're going to prepare for you specifically. We're going to ban what you think you're really good at. And then when people play them, it's like, all right, we have to ban out a specific strategy that we don't want to play against because there's just so many things in LMQ's bag of tricks. Yeah, they said weeks ago that they have a very specific plan for every single team that they play. So the, the kind of the inverse mm -hmm. of that is, what do teams have to specifically do against LMQ then to beat them? Because we, as you stated, Jat, we saw some, we saw three bans that were not a surprise. Mm -hmm. But... Zhao Zhao still ended up on Yasuo, right? They yep. still had they had Nunu, they had Vasily on Triss. Like, you can't ban them out, so what is your approach then? Yeah, I think you ban the OPs against them. Or the OP... Oh, sorry, you do not ban the OPs against them. Uh, you ban the things that are pretty good and that they main. So you ban the Yasuo, you ban the Lulu, and you ban the Tristana. If you're red side, and you just kind of roll the dice and play against Cassidy. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and then, maybe, and then maybe pick up a couple OPs for yourself. Exactly. There. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for the insight. There's quite a lot of information there to absorb. But coming up after a quick break, we'll check out what, we've been, what you've been saying over on Twitter, not us. Then we'll unleash Complexity and Cloud9 to battle it out in our fourth match of the day. Grab a snack and get right back here for more League Action.